Hello, I'm Ying Hui Fu from the Department of Neurology at University of California, San Francisco. Today, I'm going to tell you two examples of the mutations that we have found for humans who have advanced sleep phase syndrome. Um, I will also show you how, by studying these mutations, we can actually learn a great deal about the molecular mechanisms of human sleep behavior regulation. Before I start, I want to first briefly remind you the core molecular clock. For the mammalian system, there are two major transcription factors, clock and BMO. They form dimers and bind to the promoter of clock control genes. And PERS and CRIs are the most well-studied clock control genes. The protein levels of PERS and CRIs are tightly regulated. And the PER is regulated by casein kinase 1 delta. Another important kinase for circadian regulation is the GSK3 beta. PERS and CRIs can form dimer and then come back to suppress the transcription activation of clock and BMO, therefore forming a feedback, transcriptional feedback loop. The first example I want to tell you is a mutation we found for this family that Louis um, told you in the first part of this talk. Um, the mutation carriers in this family, they all showed about four hours phase advance. The mutation was found in the gene encoding for casein kinase 1 delta. And the mutation changed the amino acid at 44 from a threonine to alanine. And this mutation makes the casein kinase 1 has a reduced enzyme activity. Here, as you can see, with the gray bars represent normal casein kinase 1 activity, and the white bars represent the mutant casein kinase 1 activity. You see with five different substrates, the mutant enzymes showed reduced activity compared to normal enzymes. Now, for the mice that we generated to carry um, th this specific human mutation, these mice have a period length shorter than the control mice. And this is as we expected, because we expect the phase advanced animals should have a shorter period length. Now, if we removed the endogenous CK1 delta gene from the mutant transgene, then the period is even shorter. Now, interestingly, when we made Drosophila with this specific human mutation, we found that the flies carry mutant human CK1 delta. Their period is longer. And it's longer than not only in the wild type uh, flies, but also for the flies that carry wild type human CK1 delta gene. So what this told us is that despite the fact that individual components of the molecular clock is highly conserved between mammalian system and Drosophila, it is likely that there will be differences in the regulatory mechanism between these two different systems. Now, one interesting feature for this particular family, as Louis mentioned, is that all the mutation carriers for this family not only have a sleep behavior trait, they also all have asthma and migraine headache. So our hypothesis for this is that we know that kinases can have up to hundreds of different substrates. So if a mutation is occurred on a kinase, it is possible that the mutation can affect more than one substrate, therefore lead to multiple uh, phenotypes. Now, because CK1 delta is very important for circadian regulation, so we decided to carry out a proteomic study for CK1 delta and also for CK1 epsilon. And while we were doing this proteomic study, we decided to also address another question. From previous studies, people have shown that casein kinase 1s, their activities remain the same throughout the day. So we wonder, can these kinases then phosphorylate different substrates at the different times of the day, therefore serving as part of their regu regulatory function? 
And indeed, our results show that CK1 delta and CK1 epsilon can phosphorylate different substrate at the different times of the day. Now, from the proteomic study, we identify a novel gene called PHB2 here. And PHB2 also plays important role in circadian clock regulation. PHB2 can suppress clock control genes expression in a manner that is independent from BMO and clock. Interestingly, PHB2's protein level is regulated by CK1 epsilon, but messenger RNA level of PHB2 is regulated by CK1 delta. Now, the second mutation I want to tell you is for this particular family that Louis also showed you. We call it Kindred 2174. And this is the very first family that we collected. The mutation carriers in this family also have four hours phase advance um, behavior trait. Now, this is a very large family, so we were able to use this family and used a traditional human genetics method to map the gene to the telomere region on the long arm of chromosome 2. We then used a standard positional cloning method to find the mutation in period 2 gene. And turns out the mutation was found in the amino acid position 662 that changes from serine to glycine. Now, when we examine the amino acid sequence in this serine 662 region, we found that the amino acid sequence in this region is highly conserved among different pairs from human and mice. In addition, we found that there are four serine residues immediately C-terminal to this serine 662, the first serine here. And interestingly, they all follow this exact serine X, X serine motif. And serine X, X serine motif is a consensus sequence for casing kinase 1 activity. So we carried out a series of biochemical studies. And what we found is that the first serine of this five serine region can be phosphorylated by a priming kinase. And when this occurred, then the following four serines can be phosphorylated by casing kinase 1 delta. Now, in the mouse model that we made to carry this specific PER2 serine 662 to glycine mutation, the mutant transgenic mice has a period shorter than the wild type mice, as we expected. And this is also in agreement with the human subject as a shorter period length. Now, if we remove the endogenous PER2 allele from these mice, then the period became even shorter. Now, interestingly, when we generate the mouse model that changes the serine to an aspartic acid to mimic the constitutive phosphoserine condition at this specific site, then the transgenic mice have a longer period than the wild-type mice. Now, again, if we remove the endogenous PER2 allele from the serine to aspartic acid mutant transgenic mice, their period became longer. So what we have here is that we have this five serine region. The first serine is phosphorylated by a priming kinase. And then CK1 delta then phosphorylate the four additional serines. And when this happens, then the animals will have a longer period, which we can think of it as a slower clock because it takes longer to finish the cycle. Now, if the first serine is blocked, it cannot be phosphorylated. Therefore, none of them is phosphorylated. Then the animal will have a shorter period length. And we can think of this as a faster clock. Now, when we look at the activity recording for our serine to glycine mutant transgenic mice, we found that four hours 
before we turn the light off, the animal starts to become active. Their activity turns on. And four hours before the light on, the activity starts to wind down. And this is very similar to human subject with four hours phase advance. So this mouse model actually recapitulates human phenotype very well. So we showed that this serine to glycine mutation will make the PER2 protein become hypophosphorylated. But how does a hypophosphorylated PER2 then lead to an advanced sleep phase behavior trait? Well, there were three obvious possibilities. First is that the mutation could affect PER2's protein stability. Second is that the mutation will affect PER2's nuclear translocation timing or mechanism. Third is that the mutation could affect PER2's repressor activity, therefore change the transcription regulation. And we examined each of these possibilities, and our results show that the major effect for this mutation is changing PER2's repressor activity. Now here you can see that the wild type PER2 messenger RNA peak as here, this peak, and the SG PER2 messenger RNA actually peaks earlier than the wild type PER2 messenger RNA. And the SD PER2 messenger RNA peak later than the wild type agreeing with the SG has a shorter period length and advanced sleep um, behavior trait. Now, not only that, the SG PER2 messenger RNA peak lower than the wild type PER2 messenger RNA, and the peak for SD PER2 is higher than the wild type um, PER2. And this is true not only for the mouse endogenous PER2 messenger RNA, also for human PER2 transgene messenger RNA. So what this result told us is that the SG PER2 is a stronger repressor than the wild type protein, and the SD PER2 is a weaker repressor than the wild type PER2 protein. So we knew that um, PER2 protein is regulated by casein kinase 1 delta. So we wonder whether we could use our mouse model to study genetic interaction between CK1 delta and PER2. And this slide is just show you that the copy number of CK1 delta actually does not affect um, mouse period length. With the um, heterozygous CK1 delta knockout mice with only one copy of the normal gene, and CK1 delta wild type transgene with four to five copy of normal gene, their period remains the same with wild type mice. Again, for the serine to glycine PER2 mutant transgene, the period is shorter than the wild type mice. But if we cross this SG mutant transgenic mice with the CK1 delta heterozygous knockout mice, their period became longer. Now, if we cross the SG mutant transgenic mice with the CK1 delta wild type transgene, then the period became shorter. So what this result told us is that on PER2 protein, in addition to this phosphorylation site by CK1 delta around 662, there are other CK1 delta phosphorylation sites for PER2. And these other sites, when they are phosphorylated, it can lead to a shorter period length. So we propose this model to explain all of our data together. We think that PER2 has multiple phosphorylation sites by casein kinase 1 delta. And one of these sites is around serine 662. And th when this site is phosphorylated, it can lead to increased PER2 messenger RNA and protein and lead to a longer period length. Now, when these other sites are phosphorylated, it can lead to increased PER2 degradation, therefore lower PER2 protein level. This then lead to a shorter period length. And under normal conditions, these different pathways have to maintain a delicate balance. 
in order for the animals to have a stable, normal period length. So all these results really point out the importance of per tool force correlation in setting the speed of the clock. In fact, this is true not only for per tool protein, but also for other um, clock proteins as well. So then this then raised another question, which is, are other post-translational modifications also important for regulating circadian clock? So as I showed you earlier, we did a proteomic study for CK1 delta. And GSK3 beta is another important kinase for circadian regulation. So we also did a proteomic study for GSK3 beta. In this proteomic study, we found more than 400 potential GSK3 beta substrate. And these more than 400 proteins can be mapped onto many biological pathways, including some of them previously shown, and others are novel biological pathways um, for GSK3 beta. Out of these more than 400 proteins, we decided to follow up on one particular protein, which is O-gluconate transferase, or OGT in short. OGT and OGA, which is O-gluconase, they are responsible for the O-gluconate post-translational modification um, for proteins. Interestingly, the GSK3 beta phosphorylation can significantly increase OGT's activity here with the phosphorylation by GSK3 beta significantly increase the activity. Now, o gluconate modification also occurs on serine and threonine. So the first question we asked was, does o gluconylation also play a role in regulating circadian clock? We first used an in vitro system um, to see if o gluconylation can affect circadian period length. When we add OGA inhibitor to the cell, we found that the period length becomes longer. Now, if we add OGT inhibitor to the cell, then the period became shorter. We also confirmed this in vivo. With OGT conditional knockout mice, we found that their period is shorter than the control mice. For the Drosophila, the OGT knockdown, the period is shorter. The OGA knockdown, the period is longer than the wild type flies. So all these different systems suggest that under higher oak gluconization condition, it can lead to a longer period length. And the lower oak gluconization level leads to a shorter period length. We then found that at least two of the core clock components are modified by o -gluconate. Clock protein, when it's modified by the o -gluconate, it actually reduced its transcription activity. But the PER2 protein, when it's modified by o -gluconate, it actually further enhanced its repressor activity. Now, with PER2 luciferous activity as index, we see that clock and BMO can turn on PER2 promoter. In the presence of OGT, the transcription activity is significantly suppressed. Now, wild type PER2 protein is a repressor for clock and BMO activity. In the presence of OGT, the PER2 repressor activity is further enhanced. Now, as I told you earlier, the PER2 S to G mutant is a stronger repressor than the wild type protein. However, when we add OGT to the reaction with mutant PER2 protein, it did not affect the transcription activity. This then gave us an idea that maybe all gluconate modification plays a role on this serine 662 size. We use a cultural system together with Western blot to show that 
when PER2 protein is O-glucanin modified, it actually blocks the phosphorylation at serine 662 sites. And also, if the serine 662 at PER2 is phosphorylated, the PER2 protein does not get O-glucanin modified as well as the PER2 protein that is not phosphorylated at serine 662. So together, these results suggest that there is an interplay between O-glucanesylation and phosphorylation at PER2 serine 662. We also used mass spectrometry to map all the O-glucanate modification sites focusing on the serine 662 region. And we found many O-glucanate modification sites marked in red here, including the serine 662, serine 668, and serine 671. Now, OGT and OGA are responsible for O-glucanate modification of the protein. And O-glucanesylation is dependent on its substrate, UDP gluconate. UDP gluconate is derived from nutrients including glucose, amino acids, and nucleic acids through a hexosamine biosynthetic pathways. Now, O-gluconesylation can regulate circadian rhythm. So we then wondered, well, can glucose level modulate circadian clock? So we did this simple experiment. Here, on the low glucose concentration, we found that the serine 662 region of the PER2 can be phosphorylated as long as CK1 delta is present, regardless of OGT or OGA is there or not. However, on the high glucose concentration, the phosphorylation in this region is blocked as long as OGT and OGA is there regardless of CK1 delta is there or not. In summary, we found that in this serine 62 region, there are five serines in a row. When the first serine is phosphorylated by priming kinase, therefore, the four additional serines are phosphorylated by CK1 delta. This then lead to a longer period length for animal. Under high glucose concentration, the old gluconesylation can take over and block the phosphorylation for this region, therefore lead to a shorter period length and a faster clock. And we call this clock sugar rush. So we have so far collected more than 90 advanced sleep phase families. And we are continuing to use these families to identify genes and mutations responsible for this behavior trait. When we find genes and mutations, we study their protein functions. At the same time, we also generate mouse and fly models to help us understand the molecular mechanism. And with this parallel approach, we hope to gain a better understanding of human circadian and sleep mechanism. A better understanding of this regulatory mechanism will be able to come up with a better therapeutic intervention for sleep-related uh, disorders. I want to acknowledge my long-term collaborators, Louis Potacek and Chris Jones, and also all the people who contributed to this work.